Hey, welcome back. It's JB here again to derive for you, by popular demand, the moment of inertia of a solid uniform disk. Now this disk here has a height H right there. It's got a radius capital R right there. It's got a density rho. Now if it is a uniform disk, the density will equal the mass over the volume. This is for uniform uh, objects only. So this rho equals m over v for uniform objects only. I'm going to actually erase that uh, because that is not generally the case. You can have changing densities. Now we want to remember here that the moment of inertia for a bunch of discrete objects is equal to the sum of the masses of the objects times their distance away from the axis of rotation squared for each of those objects and you just add all those up. But for a solid object, we have our little discrete masses that are all infinitesimal. And so we're going to rewrite this for a continuous object. I is going to be the integral, adding up all infinity little uh, moments of inertia of all the infinitesimal masses. I'm going to write it like this. It's you take each little infinitesimal mass, dm, and you multiply that by its respective r squared, its distance from the rotational axis or displacement from the rotational axis r. Uh, typically, uh, this is written like this because we're so used to having it, uh, the dm right at the end, usually write it like this, but you really need to see the similarity of this thing with this right up here. Those are really the same thing, but this is for this one right here is for infinitesimal masses, a an infinite number of them. So what one one of our uh, main challenges here is to figure out how to express this little dm, the mass, the infinitesimal mass of something a distance r away from our rotational axis. Well, let's take a look at our our object right here. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. And I will pose to you, what is the shape of an object that is a distance little r away? So notice that I distinguish between big R, the, uh, the radius of this solid disk, and little r right over here, which is the, all the radii that are possible on this. And you may see that they're going to start from 0 and go out to big R. But that little r right here is a variable. So what is the shape of an, uh, the part of this thing that's all r away? Well, to do that, we're going to need to take a, uh, a look at it from the top of this thing. So it looks like this. It's like a circle from the top. And uh, again, we are, uh, it's rotating about its center of mass. I should have mentioned that before because the moment of inertia would be different if it wasn't rotating about that point. Um, and um, the question is, what does this piece that's all the same radius away from that axis of rotation look like? Well, it looks like a cylindrical shell. A cylindrical shell looks something like this. It's, I'm going to try to draw it on here. Uh, it, it's a cylinder with infinitesimally thin walls. And it goes down like that, and it's got a. It's got, it's basically just a uh, one shell. If you add up infinite numbers of those with increasing radii, that will total up to this whole cylinder. So that is what my cylindrical shell looks like. What does it look like from the top there? It is a ring, and it's got some width to it, very, very narrow width, in fact, infinitesimal width, because we need this all to be the same radius away, the same r away from that axis of rotation. So let's call this that distance r. And let's call its width right here. How wide is this thing? Again, it's infinitesimal. We're going to have to call that dr, that width of that infinitesimal ring. Of course, it goes down into uh, this circle, it goes into the screen here. So its height is also h. So we got to figure out how to express the mass of that infinitesimally thin shell that is cylindrical in shape. How to do that? Well, and that, that's basically what we need 
right here. We need to express that dm, uh, the dm being the infinitesimal mass of that infinitesimally thin shell that is cylindrical in shape. How to do that? Well, you might uh, start with what's the area of this infinitesimally thin ring here? Because if we get the area of that ring and we multiply it by h, the height, how deep it goes into the screen here, then we'll have the volume of that thing. Uh, and then once we get the volume, we can figure out the mass of that thing. Uh, so uh, to review that, what we're after here is dm, which is going to be uh, just rho times the infinitesimal volume of our thin uh, cylindrical shell. And how are we going to express that? Well, that's just going to be the rho, which, by the way, doesn't have to be a constant. It could be a changing rho. In this case, it is a constant times the height of this thing times the infinitesimal area dA of that ring. So it's just rho times dV, where V is the, the infinitesimal volume of our ring of height h. And that is just rho times the height h times dA, the area of this, this thing right here, that ring, that, that ring right there. So how can we express dA, the infinitesimal area of that? Well, you might guess, well, we're going to just do pi r squared outer minus pi r squared inner. We can't do that. I'm going to just write that down. That's wrong. Pi r squared outer minus pi r squared inner. Don't write that down because that is wrong. This thing has the same inner and outer radius. That equals zero. That cannot be it. In order to figure this out, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this ring right there. I'm going to cut it right there. And that's going to give me uh, a strip. Let's go ahead and draw this strip that we have here. It's this long here. And this is these ends are where I cut it there. And this little strip that I've just stretched out, it took that circular strip and stretched it out. It's got this thickness or width right there of dr. And it's also got the length from here to here of what? Well, notice that this is a arbitrary, right there is an arbitrary radius r. So what is the length of this arbitrary strip right there? Well, it's the length is 2 pi r from there to there. So what is the area? dA is going to be equal to just width times height, it's 2 pi r dr. That's the area. So what is the volume of this thing that goes all the way down h deep? So what's the volume of this infinitesimally thin cylindrical shell? The volume of it, dv, is going to be equal to rho, uh, the h times dA the height times the area, and that's just going to be h times 2 pi r dr. So that is our dv that we need right there. And now all we got to do is to express the dm, the mass of that little bit, dm is going to be equal to rho times dv, which is just rho times this whole mess, times h times 2 pi r dr. So we have now expressed dm, and that is actually probably the toughest part of this thing, is just expressing dm. Now that we've determined the expression for our little teensy weensy piece of mass, dm, we can now progress to the actual integration. So now I've uh, just eliminated everything except our most crucial information, that the definition of the moment of inertia is the integral of r squared dm. I've kept on there how we found out the area of our little infinitesimally thin strip of length 2 pi r and width dr, and that area is 2 pi r times dr. 
uh, and that our dm, our little eensy weensy infinitesimal piece of mass that's all the same radius away from our axis of rotation, that dm for a cylind uh, cylinder is rho, the density, times dv, the little piece of volume. And that is just rho times the height times dA, that little area of our uh, thin strip. Uh, and that is just rho times h times 2 pi r dr. So what we're going to do is now integrate. I equals the integral of r squared dm. And what are our ranges of r values that we have to do this for? Well, we've got to start at the middle of this thing right in there. We've got to start right in the middle. So that is r equals 0. And we're going to end up where? At the very outside, which is r equals our big R, the radius of this cylinder, this radius of this disk. So what this integral means is we're going to add up all the moments of inertia of each individual cylindrical shell, starting from r equals 0 it's dm times it's r squared and making the radii bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we add up all the infinity dms of each individual cylindrical shell times each individual r squared value for each cylindrical shell. When we add up all those, we get the moment of inertia of the entire cylinder. So I'm going to rewrite this now as the integral from r equals 0 to r equals r of r squared times now I just got to substitute in this whole thing, this expression for dm, our little piece of mass. And that is going to be rho times h times 2 pi r dr. And then I've just got to clean this up a little bit, which shouldn't be too hard. And that's going to give me, I'm going to take out all the constants so I don't have to worry about those. In fact, everything except for r and uh, Got to leave dr in there because that's our infinitesimal uh, uh, change in r. That uh, That's what we have to integrate with respect to. So I'm just going to bring everything out. i equals, we can bring out the rho, we can bring out the h, we can bring out the 2, I'll put it right in front there. We can bring out the pi, we can bring out, that's about it. All that's left in there is the integral from 0 to r of r cubed now, r cubed and dr. So let's go ahead and integrate that. When we do so, we get this whole expression out here, 2 times rho times h times pi. And then I'm going to integrate that. That gives me r to the fourth over 4. And I've got to evaluate that from r equals 0 to r equals r. And that's pretty easy. When we do that, uh, it's just going to be, still have our constants out front, 2 rho h pi times I get r to the fourth over 4, always final minus initial, and then that's 0 to the fourth over 4. That's nothing left there. So what I end up with here is this. 2 rho h pi times r to the fourth over 4. Well, that doesn't look that familiar until we do this. Notice that uh, I'm going to rewrite this uh, in a uh, way that will probably help us decode what's going on. First, I'm just going to get rid of this and this. That be cancels becomes 2. I'm going to rewrite this like this, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to put this uh, pi out front here. I'm going to take out two of those r's, make it r squared, and then I'm going to make that, put that h right there, and then uh, that, then I'm going to put the rho here, and it's all over, and then I have another r squared that's over 2. And that is an equivalent expression, but what the heck is this, pi r squared h, and what the heck is this, rho, pi r squared is the area of the whole cylinder top times h, that just gives us the volume of this whole thing. Times rho right there, that's that. Rho right there, volume times rho, that is the mass. I'm just going to rewrite it like this. And then, notice what I get here. This thing right there is just the mass. 
So I'm going to rewrite this thing. I of the cylinder is equal to, that is equal to 1 half the total mass of the cylinder, m, times r squared. And that is our moment of inertia of a uniform cylinder or a uniform disk. Now, this derivation actually can be used for a lot more things. The only thing you got to realize is that the moment of, uh, sorry, the, this rho could be a variable. It could depend on r. So all you got to do is, in the integral, just substitute that whatever rho is, whatever the density is, and it could be changing, could be a function of r. Whatever that is, just substitute that right in the integral, and you will get it right.